In this short video, I'm going to show you how to connect VoIP lines to an alarm panel. Before we get started, I want to tell you about a company who's been providing telecom services since 1985. U.S. Tech is an industry leader in providing low-cost VoIP, UCAS, SIP trunks, and every kind of telephone service in between. They can drastically lower your phone bills, provide telephone service for your home or business within hours, and provide ongoing technical support along the way. That's U.S. Tech. Call, text, or chat today and let U.S. Tech do the work for you. Okay, after you've configured your SIP gateway and registered it to your SIP servers, the first thing you want to do is click on the Profile 1 or Profile 2 tab. Now I'm going to show, tell you why. Um, if you look at the FXS ports over here, you'll see you'll see that I have multiple SIP trunks configured into this gateway. I have two lines in a PBX system. I have an alarm one line, an alarm two line. I have a credit card machine and I have a fax line. You'll notice the fax line is on profile two because profile two is going to be connecting with a different server than profile one. So if you're using this just for an alarm line, you can use Profile 1 because it's not going to affect any other lines that you're using. Uh, see these profiles here. But since I'm using telephone lines in a PBX system on this gateway to talk over, it's not going to work well doing the tweaking on Profile 1. These settings really diminish talk path quality, but really enhance the communication clarity between devices. So you don't want to make these setting changes on lines that you will be talking over. Okay, the only setting changes we're going to be doing today is on Profile 2 tab. So go ahead and scroll down and you'll see my setting changes are pretty much at default here. Uh, the first setting change we want to make sure that Keep Alive is on. Uh, the regist register, exp exp register expiration is set back down to two. Just keep scrolling down. Allow incoming SIP messages from SIP proxy only. We're going to click yes on that. Okay, the first real setting change we want to make is for preferred DTMF method. You see how this is basically set up for talk path for telephone lines that you, could, you would talk over. But for alarm lines, we want to change this. We want to make priority one audio in audio. We want to make priority two, this RFC and Priority three is going to be the SIP info. So let's go ahead and make those changes now in audio, RF, and then SIP info. We want to go to disable DTMF negotiation, and we're going to click yes, use above DTMF order without negotiation. So click that yes, and make sure these, the first one up here is in audio. Okay, after you've done that, we're going to scroll down. We're going to disable call waiting. Um, sometimes I like to make these ring timers a little longer. I'll boost this up to 90. Uh, I'll boost this up to, let's say, 40. But that's not necessary for what we're trying to accomplish today with the alarm panels. But what is necessary is our next step. And that is, you go down to Preferred Vocoder. And what you want to do, where it says Use First Matching Vocoder in 200 OK, we want to click Yes. And every choice, 1 through 8, we want to make VCMU. We're going to change all those to VCMU. And we're going to change the voice frames per TX. We're going to make that, we're going to bump it up to 10 instead of 2. And that's all we're going to do there. Then we're going to scroll back down. You're going to make sure that loop current disconnect is on yes. All right, right here where it says gain, 
TX, that's transmit. The transmit we're gonna put at minus four dB. I'm sorry, we're gonna put that at minus six dB. And receive, we're gonna put it minus four dB. So minus six dB for transmit, minus four dB for receive. And for disable line echo canceler, we're gonna click yes. For disable network echo suppressor, we're gonna click yes. And that's all that we need to do for our alarm panels. We're gonna then click apply. So in review, the three major changes you want to make on your Grand Stream Gateway on Profile 1 or Profile 2, whichever one you're going to be using, is first, right here, preferred DTMF method. We want to make that audio. You want it to look like that. You want to click this. You want to scroll down to preferred vocoder. You want to click yes there. And all of these you want to make PCMU. You want to bump this up to 10 seconds. Or I'm sorry, yeah. Transmit, you want to you want to bump voice frames per TX up to 10. You want to scroll down and make your gain, put it at minus 6 dB, your receive at minus 4 dB. You wanna click yes, yes, disabling line echo and network echo. You wanna scroll down and apply. Go back and check and make sure the settings changed and if they did, you probably wanna reboot your gateway. It looks like everything changed, settings changed. Everything looks good and that's all there is to it.